Okay, so there were two egg-related questions, one from Lisa, one from Stephanie, and they both have to do with, you know, are, at the end of the day, like, is, is it bad to consume eggs every day? How many eggs can you consume every day? People like Dr. Michael Greger are saying that eating eggs every day are, um, are negative for your health, have negative effects on your health. So, so really, the, the, the question is, you know, are eggs bad for you? <laughs> and I have addressed eggs in several different Q&As. If you want to go back to Q&A number 37, Q&A number 25 are both different Q&As I've talked about eggs in. So there was um, a study that Michael Greger had cited, and it was this, and we're going to talk about this study. Um, it's it's replacing three percent of egg protein f- with plant protein. So the original study was developed at the National Cancer Institute to improve our understanding of the relationship between diet and health, and um, you know eggs eggs is eggs is part of that diet. And so it was a very large pr- prospective study that looked at data from over 400,000 individuals, and they were followed for 16 years. The data was extensively adjusted for a variety of confounders, so physical activity, vitamin supplement use, energy intake, intakes of a variety of saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, and trans fats, fiber, vegetables, fruits, lots of things like that. And so these, but these were food frequency questionnaires. So these were people just filling out questionnaires based on um, all those questions. So what this study found was that plant protein intake was significantly and inversely associated with mortality from all causes. So there was a significant reduction in all-cause mortality. So this was there was a 12% and 14% reduction in all-cause mortality for every 10 gram increase in pr- uh, plant protein powder or plant protein replacement, I guess. And this was in both men and women. In contrast, animal protein intake was not significantly associated with mortality in either men or women, but when they when researchers went on to look more specifically at that data, the animal protein data, and what's called a sensitivity analysis, researchers examined what happened if people then substituted substituted 3% of that energy from um, animal protein with plant protein instead. And they did find that when people did substitute that protein, there was a 20%, 21% and 24% reduction in all-cause mortality in women and men, respectively. And then there was a smaller but significant reduction when plant protein was substituted for red meat and dairy products, but not when it was substituted for white meat. So it seemed as though uh, the substitution with plant protein and the effects on reducing all-cause mortality were only when it was for red meat and dairy products. Now, there's a couple of ways of interpreting this study. So on the one hand, you could look at this and say, a very extreme view, animal proteins are always a health risk compared to plant proteins, and you should avoid them completely. On the other hand, you have to realize this is observational data. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of problems with observational data, right? Um, You know, I think on the one hand, you look at this data and you go, oh, well, they didn't look at different types of meat, like the processed meat, which we do know is bad, and processed meat is typically red meat. And so maybe some of the reason why substituting the the red meat with the 3% plant protein was because they were now not eating some of the processed meats. We don't really know. The other thing is, is that if you were to take those people eating the animal proteins and and look at only the people that have no unhealthy lifestyle factors, which another very, very, very large study did do, then they had the same all-cause mortality as the people eating plants. And so it's it just shows that even though there was a lot of adjustment of data looking at, you know, people's physical activity and vitamin supplement use and all that stuff, you have to then really look at the people and and say, okay, in a person that is completely healthy, they're physically active, they're not overweight, they're not smoking, they're not consuming a lot of alcohol. Why is it those people have the same mortality as plant eaters? Well, maybe because people that are unhealthy and then eating a lot of meat on top of that and they're sedentary, they're not using those amino acids to build muscle, 
the amino acids are growth signals. Maybe they're, you know, growth signals that are allowing damaged cells to become a cancer cell, right? So there's a lot of nuance here, and observational studies do not always pick up that nuance. So I think that is important to keep in mind as well. There was another um, another big study, and this was this was also oh sorry no that was the same study. Okay, so what I what I meant to say the other large study is the one I just mentioned <clears throat> was also a very large study and did find there was no difference in mortality again when you're only looking at people that are healthy and have no unhealthy lifestyle factors that eat meat and they have that they have n eggs and they have the same mortality as plant eaters so it's one of those it's one of those things where you have to then you really have to think about all the data and all the nuance and go okay well maybe it's not so healthy to eat eggs and meat as long as i'm not doing or partaking in other unhealthy lifestyle factors and if you are sedentary and overweight and smoke and or do any one of those then stop doing that unhealthy lifestyle, you know, thing, or you're probably better off not eating a lot of meat and eggs. I think that that's also the, the take home. Let's kind of go back to the eggs because I do think that it, um, that was the, the main part of the question. Just talking about nutritional composition of eggs. So they are really packed full of a lot of nutrition. They have a lot of really different good, you know, good, micronutrients in them and um, macronutrients as well. So choline is high in eggs. Choline is good for your brain. There's a lot of B energy, uh, B vitamins in, in eggs as well and egg yolk and choline is an egg yolk. Also for energy, um, panathetic acid for metabolism. Phosphorus is really good for bones. <clears throat> There's vitamin A and vitamin D. There's iodine, selenium, everything from, you know, your vision to your immune system. I mean, all these things, all these micronutrients are important for a lot of physiological pro uh, processes as well. Not to mention they're a really good source of protein, right? And also monounsaturated fat. Now, a medium-sized egg also contains about 1.3 grams of saturated fat and 177 milligrams of dietary cholesterol, which used to raise concerns about their effects on, you know, cardiometabolic health. However, we now know that dietary cholesterol is not a major contributor to total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol inside of our body, right? It's really saturated fat, trans fats, those are the major players with respect to diet for increasing total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, um, et cetera. So uh, let's talk about some other studies that were done looking just at eggs. So one study examined, um, this was a very large analysis looking at 40 different studies involving over 3.6 million people to look at the effects um, of eating eggs on people's health. So specifically, it looked at what happens when people eat one extra 50 gram egg each day. The study initially suggested that eating an additional egg each day could slightly increase the risk of death from heart-related issues. However, after considering the amount of cholesterol consumed from all dietary sources, eggs alone were not associated with higher mortality rates. So again, it just in it indicates that the broader context of one's diet and the and you know, there's a lot of different factors playing a role here that affect, that's affecting, you know, someone's risk of cardiovascular disease. There's also been a variety of randomized controlled trials looking at egg intake as well and a variety of biomarkers. So there was a meta-analysis of 27 randomized controlled trials. People that consumed anything from five eggs a week to three eggs a day in the intervention group did show that eating a lot of eggs a day can increase LDL, it can increase HDL, it can, it, it can increase a lot of the, the lipoproteins. And so for example, there was a, a mean increase in LDL by about 5.6 milligrams per deciliter and an, H, an HDL increase of about 2.13 milligrams per deciliter compared with the control group. Um, overall, you know, Eating, eating eggs in moderation, I think, is likely to have any significant adverse effect on cholesterol. And it, do, it did seem to have at least a beneficial effect on HDL. But obviously, there are people that are very sensitive to um, saturated fat. And also, to, so there are some people that are sensitive to dietary cholesterol, in, even though in general, it's not a major regulator of cardiometabolic health for most people. There are some people that are very sensitive to it. So the American Heart Association put together an advisory board, and they 
analyzed a variety of studies involving eggs. They looked at dietary cholesterol intake from egg consumption. They looked at um, cardiovascular risk from egg consumption. And here's a summary of, of, their, of their findings. They said, overall, consuming eggs was not found to have a significant association with the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases in the general population. And they state, this suggests that eggs can be part of a, a balanced diet and does not necessarily increase the risk of heart disease for most people. And in fact, when they did a more detailed analysis of several, several studies, what they found was that people who ate a high number of eggs, so seven or more per week, had a slightly lower risk of a stroke compared to people who ate fewer eggs, so less than one per week. And this was about a 9% reduction in stroke risk. I mean, it's not huge, but it, again, it's, it's still something beneficial. When it comes to coronary heart disease, eating eggs did not show a significant impact in, in the risk of developing coronary heart disease in the general population. However, there were individuals with type 2 diabetes and um, where people with type 2 diabetes did have an association between egg consumption and increased coronary heart disease risk. So there could be uh, a rationale for why people with type 2 diabetes might be at a higher risk for coronary heart disease if they're eating a lot of eggs. And that, again, comes down to some of those other studies where if they're not looking at people that have diabetes, maybe they haven't even been classified as having it. Maybe they're pre-diabetic, right? Like all those things are going to affect that observational data. Um, there was also a, a, a meta-analysis of 17 different of these randomized controlled trials looking at egg intake. And this was about three to seven eggs per day. And it did raise total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and HDL, like I mentioned, but um, it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was a, a significant enough risk to raise coronary heart disease. And so it seems like people that are very, very sensitive to those types of elevations in, in, in LDL, for example, total cholesterol, um, maybe they need to kind of monitor that a little more closely. But I think generally speaking, the ongoing debate about whether or not eggs are bad for your health or bad for heart health is somewhat settled and they're not for most people. There are certain individuals that may want to limit their egg cons consumption. And those are people with genetic reasons. Maybe they're very sensitive to dietary cholesterol or maybe they have type 2 diabetes. But generally speaking, I don't think the data, you know, is supportive of, of the statement that eggs are bad for your health. In fact, I think that um, they're, they're actually a high quality source of vitamins and protein. Do you have, but the question is, do you have to eat, you know, five eggs every day? Not necessarily, right? You don't, you know, especially if you're, especially if it, if it, if it is raising your, your LDL or your ApoB, for example, and you're really trying to work on lowering that, then, you know, every little step you can take to lower those ApoB levels is a good thing, right? And so maybe instead of eating four eggs a day, you eat, you know, one or two eggs a day. And Walter's asking about free range eggs. Yeah, so that's a good question. Pasture raised chickens have lay eggs that have a lot higher, the much higher levels of micronutrients, um, even things like lutein, which still pale in comparison to what you find in kale. But um, you'll find you'll find higher levels of all those vitamins that I mentioned and and um, also it's just a higher it's a higher quality egg for sure um, and you can even look at the yolk and see the big difference it's like a deep orange when you get like an egg from a pasture raised chicken versus you know just like a standard you know conventional chicken that's being fed corn um, I mean the egg yolk is like light yellow it's, it's very very different 